Welcome to day one of the NWR Virtual Resources Conference. It is May 2020. We're so happy to have you with us today. We have a stack of companies listed on the ASX presenting today. First, we have Red, Red, Red River Resources. Red River Resources is a diversified Australian base and precious metals producer. Its Philanga operations in Queensland produce zinc, copper and lead with gold and silver credits. And the company achieved record copper production at Philanga in the March 2020 quarter. Red River is targeting gold production at its Hillgrove project in New South Wales later this year, where restart activities are currently underway. We have Mel Palancian on the line today. He is Red River's Managing Director and he has more than 20 years experience in the mining industry. Prior to joining Red River in 2015, Mel was Deputy Operations Director at Newcrest Gosawong Operation in Indonesia. He previously held a range of senior positions, including General Manager Technical Services for MMG, Manager at Dougal River Development for Oz Minerals, and Principal Advisor Mining for Zinefex. Over to you, Mel. We can't wait to hear from you. Good morning, Laura. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining uh, the presentation this morning. It's something a little bit different, thanks to Corona, but uh, <clears throat> really looking forward to, um, to talking about Red River this morning and, and how we're going at our two, at our two operations. <clears throat> Uh, that, that front slide is a, is a high-level picture of, of Hillgrove, our newly acquired uh, gold mine in New South Wales. Um, I'll talk about that in the second half of the, the presentation this morning. But um, what is Red River? So we've got Falanga <clears throat> as our base metals operation in Queensland. Uh, it's about 200 kilometres from, from Townsville, near Charters Towers. Um, we produce copper, lead and zinc concentrates. We also get a, a decent amount of gold and silver credits um, reporting to the copper and the, and the lead concentrate. Um, we're just in the process of, uh, of, of um, closing the West 45 mine, which is the first mine which went for about two years. Um, and we've developed the second mine being far west. And now really all eyes are on the third mine, being Limetown. <coughs> and I'll talk more about Limetown a little bit later on. Current mine life, depending on how much of the resource you convert, is, is five to ten years. Um, but Thalanga has been a reasonable and, and a really steady base and, uh, and a good first operating asset for Red River. Uh, in August last year, we got the keys to Hillgrove. Hillgrove's in, in New South Wales, just out of Armadale. Um, again, a great location um, and, uh, you know, it's got a lot of potential for gold and antimony. Uh, the gold in particular is, is, a, is, a, um, is a huge opportunity for Red River. At the moment, we're looking at a restart of, of, of Hill Grove later on in, in this year. Um, I'm thinking, you know, capital costs will be sub $5 million and I'll talk to you about some of the reasons why that is. Um, but we've got a fantastic resource base there. So there's three million tonnes in Jork 12 resource, um, which gives us nearly half a million ounces of gold. But we're also in the process of converting the Jork 2004 resources, which will essentially double that number. So there's a great resource base there at Hillgrove, um, and we'll talk more about that in a second. Now, the company itself, <coughs> the market cap's around about $31 million. Um, Cash is, as at the end of the, um, the last quarter was 12.7 and currently we're running debt of around about $8.9 million, <coughs> which, uh, which came from the Truck Euro facility. The, uh, the board, um, really a bunch of operators. So, you know, mining engineers, geologists, metallurgists, um, finance guys, uh, but, Deep down in our hearts, we're all operators. Uh, you'll see a new name on the list there, Randy McMahon. So Randy's just joined us as, as General Manager of Falanga and, uh, and he's taken over from Carl Spellick. So I just want to talk to Falanga, about Falanga a little bit. So Falanga 65K is out of charters. We employ about 160, 170 people there. Great location, great infrastructure. Um, you know, when we acquired the asset in 2014, we, uh, we did a restart study 
within the first 12 months and we were pretty much ready to go. Um, but we didn't restart it until 2017, <clears throat> mainly because the market was a bit subdued and, and we, had, we basically had to be a bit patient. So we've mined West 45, we've developed Far West, which is you know kicked into gear now, um, and really looking at uh, at bringing Lion Town on. The process plant can do 650,000 tonnes per annum, so pretty much um, can double its output for zero capital in the plant, and and that's really where the Lion Town story comes in. Look, we produce very high quality copper, lead and zinc concentrates. So our concentrates are really, really high grade and clean. So, you know, there, there really isn't a smelter on the planet that doesn't want our cons. And um, yeah, we, we even in the current environment, we have no trouble selling our products. Um, so we can pretty much sell everything that we produce. Uh, the last 12 months, we've mined about 340,000 tonnes. Um, we've milled about 350,000 tonnes. Um, our copper grade, well, I suppose our, our copper and zinc mix has changed. So switching from West 45 to Far West, really the copper grade has gone up. The grades that you're seeing there of 0.7 copper is basically an average between West 45 and Far West. But uh, if you look at our production data from the last quarterly, you'll see our copper grade is, is, is steadily increasing. Um, Current oil reserve is about 1.4 million tonnes and, and a resource of around about 7 million tonnes. Uh, so the map on the right hand side shows where we are and, uh, and our tenements in, in the district, which we have you know, consolidated over, over the last few years. The uh, far west production, you can see, uh, you know, we've steadily ramped it up. Um, you know, the December quarter, you can see West 45 production dropping down and, and far west did kick in, but you know, it fell a little bit short. Um, some of the operational issues, we've, we've addressed all the issues really. And, uh, and you can see there in, in March, it's, it's really sort of got to where we needed it to be. And, um, and I can tell you that April has been, you know, as good as March. So uh, that Randy and the team have, uh, have really sort of um, delivered what, the, what we needed. At, um, at Far West and at Thalanga, and uh, really looking forward to uh, to uh, you know to seeing you know more and more tons come out of Thalanga and it being a reliable source of of oil for us over the over the coming years. So Lion Town, you can see Lion Town, the the resources there. When we acquired Thalanga, you know Lion Town was our largest resource. It was roughly 2 million tonnes at about 8.4 equivalent. Um, but really the drilling that we've done, so the discovery of Lion Town East, so Lion Town East is the same tonnes and grade roughly as, as Far West, the, the mine that's on at the moment. And then in the second half of last year, we put 36, 37 holes into Lion Town. And boy, what a surprise that was. So that that really changed Lion Town. Um, and we've just updated the resource, which we've released to the market, and we've now got over 4 million tonnes at Lion Town, 12.7 equivalent. Um, but in the right hand column there, you'll see you know, the gold grade is 1.1 grams per tonne average. And uh, yeah, so Lion Town is now our largest mineralized system, and uh, we're, we're currently doing the, the mining studies. Um, on it and uh, just to sort of get a sense of, you know, open pit or underground or a combination, you know, where is it going to end up? And, uh, and we're also doing all the sort of the environmental and the permitting and, and, and all that side of it as well to, uh, to get it development ready for next year. Um, but really this is going to underpin, you know, the land art, you know, for, for a solid 10 years. And Make no mistake, the drilling that we did last year, you know, the deepest hole that we drilled, I think, was about 250 metres below the surface. Um, Lion Town East goes down to at least 450 metres and it's still open. So there's still a lot more drilling to do at Lion Town. Um, you know, clearly the current economic situation, you know, commodity prices are a little bit subdued, so it's, it's difficult for us to commit to drilling. 
um, that you know, as soon as things do improve, you know, we will have a jewelry back at Lion Town, and uh, I'm confident that we're going to add more and more tons to this to this baby. Uh, Lion Town is is about 115 kilometres from Salonga. Um, there's a there's a dirt road there which uh, joins onto the Gregory Development Road, and uh, and you know we'll truck that all back to back to Falanga and put it through the mill. And you can see there we've got a big tenement package here. There's a lot of exploration targets that we need to get to, and um, yeah, I'm um, I'm quietly confident we'll have sort of five to ten years of mine life here for the next 15, 20 years at least. So really, you know, Falanga's in a in a solid position now. Um, you know. The Far West Mine is, is, is delivering what we needed to deliver. Randy has taken over the reins as GM and, uh, and really fitted in very nicely and, uh, and kicking goals from day one. Um, really looking to develop Lion Town and, and feeding that mill with Lion Town and Far West. Um, that would be a really good, a really good uh, put Palanga in a really good position. And also in the background, we have been looking at some of the gold assets and some of the gold opportunities in and around Falanga. Um, that'll take a little bit more time to develop. Um, you know, these things do take time to uh, to uh, to bring on, but uh, definitely, you know, there is there is a gold opportunity in and around Falanga, which we're going to explore, and we are exploring. So really, Falanga's uh, you know is, is really our, our steady state. You know, operation. Sure, you know there'll be ups and downs at Falanga. It won't be you know flat line, um, rock factory day in day out. You know we'll have good days, bad days, good months, bad months. But uh, you know I think it's it's proven that um, you know if we manage it well, you know we'll get through it and we'll get through the ups and downs of the commodity cycles. Um, you know I think. You know things have stabilised at a low level, and I'm hoping that uh, that the base metal prices do turn around in the coming months. Um, you know, with with all things Corona sort of settling down. Um, but you know, nevertheless, Falenga will pull through. Um, it's doing well. We've had a great two months there, and uh, looking to build that on that in May. And uh, you know, hopefully, we have a great story for you. Uh, when we bring out the June quarterly. So Hillgrove, uh, again, it's it's just out of Armidale. Believe it or not, it's roughly the same distance from the coast as Falanga, around about 200 kilometres from Coffs Harbour. Great location. Um, again, a, a residential workforce. Um, the history of Hillgrove is amazing. It's, so they started mining there in 1857, and 730,000 ounces of gold has come out of that 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 area. Um, thankfully for us, the, the previous two owners have invested a lot of capital into it. Um, a lot of the plants are already there and, and set up. Uh, you know, the, the plant has only seen 600,000 tonnes of ore through it. So, you know, everything's in pretty good condition. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll have to do some work to the plant. But, um, you know, I think, you know, this will be a, a much more straightforward um, restart probably even simpler than Falanga. So, uh, you know, there's there's a 250,000 tonne plant there. I'll, I'll run a video in a sec that uh, we can all have a look at some pictures and some film of um, of, of Hill Grove. Um, but there's also a pox uh, pressure oxidation um, uh, plant there, which, which, which was run for three years. Um, and that basically takes refractory gold and oxidizes it so you can turn it into Doro on site. So, you know, that's going to be key in our in our vision going forward is to is to get that pox working. But we don't need to do it on day one. And I'll, I'll explain, I'll explain why. So the current chalk resources there are about three million tons, about 500,000 ounces of gold. And as I said, if you include the two chalk 2004 resources, you can double that number. Um, so I'm going to play this video now. And I uh, just want to turn the volume down and I'll probably, I will talk over it just to point things out as we're going along.
So that's the overall site. Oh, hang on. I don't know what's happened here. I need a map. Okay, sorry about that. So that's the overall site there. Um, very compact modern mine site. So even though you know people have been mining here for 170 odd years, um, the site is a very modern mine site. It's really well laid out, very compact. Um, yeah, so if you go there, you'll, you'll see a very, very modern line site. That's the township in the background. So this is, oh, I've done it again, sorry. Right. So um, on the right hand side of the picture, you'll see the uh, crusher and the, and the big round bin is the uh, is the fine ore bin. So you basically crush, put into the fine ore bin, and then it goes left to that to that structure. Just in, in behind that structure is the mill, and you'll see a video of the mill turning. We've got that running, and that's running really fine. Um, and then in the middle of the picture is all the, the flotation cells, and uh, on, in the sort of middle right is all the, uh, the, leach, the leach tanks and the leach system. Um, in, the, uh, in the foreground, you can see the two big thickeners, the big round thickeners there. Uh, so a lot of these plants, you know, in, in pretty good nick. Um, so that big brown round thing is the mill. You'll see that turning in a second. Uh, this is the, jeez. Oh, um, Where is it? That was the pox. So I just wanted to show you the pox. That's the mill turning. So that's the pox, um, the mill. So this is the mining fleet. It's all sitting on the wrong pad. Look, underground fleet does look terrible once you bring it to surface, but uh, I can assure you the fleet's in pretty good nick, the, the mine offices and the lab. Um, pretty much everything is there. All the, all the site collection ponds, that's TSF2, the current active dam that's got two lifts on it. Um, now we're going into the gorge towards the Mets. So that's Baker's Creek itself in the gorge. Um, beautiful environment. So this is our sort of first opportunity, I guess, is the uh, Baker's Creek dump. So you can see that road that goes through the dump. So this dump has been there for over 90 years. and um, Various people that have uh, sampled it. So this is this is the the waste that came out of the Baker's Creek mine. And Baker's Creek, they pretty much stopped most of the mining in the mid 20s, early 20s. Uh, this mine produced 310,000 ounces by about 1921. And the average grade of it was 49 grams per ton, and this was their waste that they left behind. Um, so we think there's some, somewhere around about sort of 220, 250,000 tonnes here, around about two and a half grams gold. But more importantly, and we didn't know this when we uh, acquired the asset, is the metallurgy of that dump. Because if it's refractory ore, it, it, it makes for a very different restart opportunity for Red River. But um, believe it or not, no one had really done the metallurgy on this, on this dump, and we've done that now, and it's free gold. So most of it comes out in gravity and the rest comes out in uh, flotation. And then we basically just leach that and make door on site. Um, so we've just bought the gravity concentrator. Um, we bought a second hand concentrator and screen and that's on its way. Um, hopefully we can install that shortly and um, when that arrives. But, but this is what you're looking at here is the first 12 months of, um, of Hill Grove Restart. And it's pretty much pick this up, uh, crush it, grind it, put it through the gravity concentrator, float the rest, 
and then uh, leach, leach that product and then put it through the gold room and, uh, and make Doro. So this is the Mets mine. Um, again, a modern underground mine. The uh, syndicate, Sunlight and Black Globe and all bodies are in here. Uh, look, this will be our first mining centre. Um, syndicate is, is pretty much developed. All the development is done there. So we'll basically go in there and start stoping and I'm expecting syndicate to be about the first 12 months and then we'll mine Sunlight and Black Globe. This is the Bracken Spur portal. Um, it's another mine around about a kilometre and a half to the south. So for me, you know, in a lot of ways, Hillgrave has a, been a little bit sort of misunderstood. It's lost its way in the last 15 years. Um, but, you know, if I look at, you know, Hillgrave, it's it's always been successful when, uh, when people have mined gold. And, um, you know, for many, many years, uh, you know, a lot of people made a lot of money out of Hillgrave. And, uh, and they did it by mining gold. So our strategy is the same, focus on the high grade gold. Um, and that's really phase one there. And then phase two is to go back into the next mine, <coughs> start, start mining syndicate and then sunlight and black loads. And then really, you know, phase three is, you know, you haven't spoken about that in much detail, but it's gonna involve Brackens and Eleanor and Garibaldi all bodies. There's a lot of all bodies here that we've already got. As I said, there's in Jork, you know, 12 and, and, and 2004, there's over a million ounces. So really looking forward to, uh, to seeing this in production later this year. It will be towards the end of the year, the calendar year. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of little bits and pieces. There's nothing really big that we have to do, but there's a lot of little bits and pieces that we have to, um, to get right. And, uh, and it's important that we do get it right, given the history of Hillgrove. Um, we're also converting those chalk 04 resources to chalk 12. And look, there's there's a sheer load of exploration opportunities there. And uh, you know, the the Curry's one is is a really good example of something that's sitting there on the plateau. You know, no one has sampled it for decades and decades and decades. And uh, if you look at our Curry's announcement, it's a really good example of of what's out. Uh, and, and all these ore bodies that, that we've spoken about, they're all open, so they all need drilling as well. So I'm confident if we keep drilling here, we'll keep finding more stuff. Um, and look, I suppose this graph is an interesting one because, uh, you know, really it's shut when... Um, Mel, sorry, just in the interest of time, um, you, you've covered off so much already, but we do have, we have a couple of questions to ask you. So it'd be cool. great if we could just fire away with them. Um, on the Hillgrove mine, obviously you said, you know, there's a really rich history there. Um, began mining there in 1837, two former um, owners before uh, Red River. And there isn't, a, there isn't a hell of a lot of work to be done, but there are bits and pieces. So maybe if you could please outline um, what we can expect from Hillgrove over the coming 12 to 18 months. You mentioned um, end of the calendar year, we might be able to see a restart, but if you could go into a bit more detail about the bits and pieces you were talking about. Sure, so really, you know, Thalanga, who, um, the, the Thalanga GM, Carl Spellick, um, has taken over the reins at Hillgrove and uh, and he'll, he'll deliver the restart for Hillgrove. Um, really, we're just gonna see some, some minor sort of repairs to the plant, some minor additions to the plant, like the uh, gravity concentrator and the screens and, and some small pumps and bits and pieces. But by and large, it's, um, it's a pretty straightforward restart on the Baker's Creek. And then, um, and then really looking at you know, the underground, whether we mine it ourselves or, or whether we bring in a contractor. Um, and that'll be roughly uh, 12 months after we uh, start on the Baker's Creek dump. So it, there's nothing really revolutionary or anything like that. It's just um, a very basic, simple restart which is how we like it. So when can we expect the first sales, just to reiterate, for, from Hillgrove? Uh, so we haven't made that public yet, but um, I'm sort of uh, forecasting a restart of, of operations there in, in, the, in um, Q4 calendar year. Fair enough. 
And Mel, um, at, at Falanga, how are the grades varying as you mine? Are they in line with the geological model which underpins mineral resources? This is a question from one of your investors. Sure. Look, I think it's, um, I, I really am waiting for this quarter. Uh, I, I really do want to see how this quarter performs. Um, we have had sort of a bit of a deviation, I guess, but we have relied on a lot of development ore, which does cause a little bit more dilution um, than the normal stoping. So Randy and the team are, 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 are focused on that. They're, um, they're looking at, you know, how the ore body is reconciling against um, against the uh, the block models and really you know how we're going with mining dilution and ore loss and all that sort of stuff. So I think you know we should have a better idea at the end of this quarter. Thanks, Mel. And a couple of people want to know that are tuning into the call if you could outline your cash reserves and if your cash flow positive right now. Uh, yeah, cash is at the, at the end of the quarter was 12.7 million. Um, look, I think it's fair to say that, uh, you know, March was a really good month for us and, and so was April. So, you know, current prices and current production, we are cash flow positive. Thanks for that, Mel. Thanks for joining us. We'll be following along your journey over the next uh, months and hopefully, you know, it all goes to plan with Hillgrove. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Bye. Mel. Stay on the call. Next up, we do have Jerobar Mining. Jerobar is one of the world's largest cobalt-focused companies. They're developing the USA's largest cobalt deposit in Idaho. And they also have nickel and copper exposure. Stay tuned, they'll be up in about five minutes time. Thank you. <laughs> 